I think I'm a bit sick at the moment, so sorry if I sound a little bit funny, but a few days ago, the crab update came out. Along with that came a few other things that I did not talk about at all in my uh, video, and that includes Siryu's new ultimate moves. We've been waiting for these attacks for pretty much an entire month, and when we finally got them, a lot of people were saying that they're just not that great, they're mid. Now I have to personally disagree on most of them looking mid, because they don't. I think they look cool, just not as cool as they should. Considering this is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8th character in the game that is meant to be like a public free character once it's completed. The game should have evolved far past Garo and Genos and all that, yet these ultimate moves just aren't as crazy as you would expect them to be. The ultimate startup though is crazy. We all love this. This is freaking crazy. One of the best looking alt startups in the game. Probably the best one actually. But then you get to the first alt move, Rising Fist, and it's just like... Like, that could be a base move, dude. This is the one move that I understand people calling mid, because it kind of is. Normal punch, in its total damage, does 9% more than this. This is basically a normal punch. Please tell me how this is any different from normal punch. The only thing that makes it different is the fact that you can hit it when they're ragdolled. That's like the one ultimate capability that it has and that makes sense and then we got twin fangs this one is kind of weird for me because i feel like the first half of it looks okay but the last half is pretty cool so it starts out with this but this last part is so cool dude that's cool and you can do stuff like this and then Plus that move, that does a ton of damage. I think we can all agree that these moves don't really match up to the expectations we had. You can't deny that, you can't. This is not what we should have gotten. Garo has more impactful moves and he was made and completed over a year ago. Earth Splitting Strike though, this move is insane. You can do a setup like uh, this, Twin Fangs. Okay, I screwed that up. Let's just say I, I continued the combo without down slamming, and I do Earth Splitting Strike. Look at how cool this move looks, dude. Bro, it's like the one inch punch. It's friggin' awesome. That lives up to the hype. That lives up to the expectations. And I didn't include these in my main video because they just didn't fit the structure properly. It just felt right to make the entire video about the crab. I think it's obvious that the crab is where all of the effort was placed. Like this thing just looks incredible. Probably the best like Battlegrounds boss that's ever been made. Like no glaze. The crab update was small, but there still were things that I didn't cover that are pretty interesting. And firstly, probably the coolest one is if you go into build mode, you place a block, you click configure, click on the block, and then click on gear spawner. You can make this block give you basically any gear that has ever existed on the Roblox catalog. And if you somehow don't know what gears are, they used to be a thing where you would buy the item and you could use it in specific games. And these gears are basically like little tools that have different powers. For example, here's the gold eagle sword. Um, <laughs> I, I, I've never seen this before because there's like over a thousand gears. So... Here, if I spawn a dummy, it's incredibly strong. 2018 Noisemaker. What an important item that could totally help you in battle. Speedy Cleats, Rainbow Blaster, doesn't even work. If I go into build mode, I'm pretty sure there's one specific gear that's like super broken. I think you could possibly just get the, the rocket launcher. Give yourself that. You can just give yourself a rocket launcher and win basically every fight. It one-shots. So these gears have crazy potential. Fence wall combos. Why are these coming here now? Th this should have been in the game like all the way back when wall combos were added. We could never use fences to wall combo, but now we can. So whenever you're near a fence, maybe try to wall combo instead of trying to do that weird Garo tech thing. That's not even a tech, it's just part of the game because it's a literal mechanic. 
that the owner added. And yeah, you can wall combo off to this thing now. And another thing that took a long time, but finally came, is Gojo's wall combo. Not his ultimate just the wall combo, which is fine because the owner should not waste time on a private server plus character's ultimate unless he's like got nothing to do. This wall combo, I'm pretty sure it one shots. So it's the thing he did against uh, the weed in Shibuya, you know, he crushed it with his uh, infinity and it one shots every time. Craziest wall combo in the game by far. Uh, everything else is the same, I'm pretty sure. Yep, nothing changed with his attacks or anything. All that's the same. And that's fine because Gojo is perfectly fine as he is. Oh yeah, I should also say, for some reason it's not showing at the bottom, but his ultimate bar says Sorcerer. There, now it says it, Sorcerer. So I think the last thing to talk about that's fitting for this video is the state of Siryu in general. And that's like his base moveset, ultimate moveset, everything. He's taken around two months so far to be developed and the average time for a TSB character to be finished in is around three months because Metal Bat took that long, Atomic Samurai took that long I'm pretty sure, and Sonic, I do not remember how long Sonic took but I'm pretty sure it was shorter, and Siryu's currently taking two months and Tatsumaki took six months. That is one thing I can guarantee will not happen to Siryu and probably never again until Boros. Tatsumaki was just a wild card like such an early famous character to be added and I think it was worth the six months. Tatsumaki is a pretty impressive looking character but Siryu on the other hand gets like three moves per update. Yeah he, he started out with three base attacks then we got head first and then we got three ultimate moves in one update. Basically all of his attacks have finishers already the first three do. You got the bullet barrage finisher. Probably the coolest Suryu finisher. Then you have the vanishing kick finisher. Another one of the coolest finishers. Although I did sort of like the old one better. Just a little bit. And then you got the whirlwind drop finisher. Which is actually kind of interesting. Because it has a huge AoE for a finisher. Which kind of doesn't make any sense. But it's cool because it's just a little bit different from the usual finisher. Where it like locks you in an animation and has a set function. With this you can like use it to your advantage in like teaming areas. Like if you're getting teamed on. Just go find someone. Whirlwind drop them. And all the teamers are going to get hit by this. And take damage. Uh, Head first does not have a finisher yet. Although I'm very interested to see what it's going to be. Because head first is a friggin' cool move. Head first is a better ultimate move than rising fist. Now that's something we can all agree on. As for the moveset's usability and stuff, I feel like people got the wrong idea. Everyone really wanted another Garo, like another Saitama, another fist character that was like brainless. So you could just go up to them, use the combo, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But with Siryu, it's different because his moves actually require like thought to be put into you using them. Because with Saitama, you can just do a 50% combo by doing the easiest muscle memory few key combinations and it's confirmed every single time. With Suryu, you can't just use the moves and pray. You have to like use them properly. And then there's the added aspect of the two part to vanishing kick. Hit them with the vanishing kick, make them like side dash or something. And then once they side dashed already, just hit them with that. Like, there's so many opportunities for this move, and the fact that it has infinite range is also very crazy. Siryu just has so many more possibilities than Garo and Saitama, and that just... It's too much for most people to handle, apparently. The Awakening has a giant, giant area of effect. I'm pretty sure it's the biggest in the game, if not Garo's. It's one of the biggest in the game. Does a good chunk of damage, like 20% guaranteed. You can do a move like Rising Fist, off the ground and then do that move right into that one. That does a ton of damage. From what I'm seeing right now, Suryu is going to be more like Garo's ult, where if you get hit once, you're probably screwed because this can hit from up close too. You don't have to like perfectly aim it from far away. Like that move does a lot of damage in one go. If we go up to the wall, we can see a better representation of it. This, Twin Fangs, right into Rising Fist, and then into that. That's a one-shot combo. As for which ultimate has better like range and ranged capabilities, I don't really know, because Twin Fangs is like a good little travel move, but 
if they're already far away enough from you, you're not hitting that. And Earth Splitting Strike is pretty predictable. Like if you see it, it's probably going to be dashed out of, but it is pretty fast at the same time. So maybe you make them side dash before you use it, and then you could probably hit them with it. Unless they're smart and they back dash or something like that. I don't know. There's so many different possibilities, but in the end, this character is not finished yet, and we should wait for it to be finished before truly judging it and putting it against other characters. But other than that, that's basically the update and what I didn't cover and why I didn't cover it. I wish I did cover it in the main video, but it just didn't feel right. So I'm covering it here, and hopefully that will suffice.